Today I'm taking a break from regularly scheduled programming to do a talk for women. This isn't satire. It isn't very pleasant, but it isn't satire. In Say Goodbye to Crazy, I co-authored 264 pages of advice designed specifically for women. If the reviews are any indication, we hit the mark without pulling punches. This is no different. If you're interested in getting the respect of men, and assuming you know that when I say gaining, I mean earning, I can point you to some real answers. And speak of the devil, that is my first piece of advice to you, to know the difference between respect as a verb and respect as a noun. Most men will treat you with respect, but that is not the same as respecting you. The respectful treatment is basic courtesy. It's just good manners. It doesn't include the deep admiration that comes with knowing someone and having positive regard for who they are as a human being. Not to start off on a bad foot, but I estimate that in this opening statement, I have already ruled out many of the women who will ever listen to this. There are plenty of women who don't have a clue about the difference between the verb and the noun. They don't get the concept of having to earn respect from anyone. They also don't enjoy a lot of respect from men or other women, even if they live their lives unaware of it. All this is born of another fact that women who want earned respect from men would be well advised to recognize. You were raised in a culture that disrespects men. Your training in the feminine mode of being, as broad of a brushstroke as that is, has conditioned you to take men for granted, to disrespect them, and even to control them. Not exactly a great setup for respect, but I don't want to belabor the point. If you're still listening, you probably have at least a modicum of desire to hear this out and to learn some things about what will make a man prone to have true respect for you. That is a good enough start if you're even remotely human. This stuff is simple enough, even if it isn't easy. Here's the next item on my list. In relationship conflicts, come to the table like an adult, ready to embrace adult solutions, and ready to give ground each and every time the truth and integrity demand it. This one comes early because it's a game changer. Not to put too fine a point on it, but if you can't do this, no one will ever really respect you. You're going to have to settle for the same brand of respect reserved for waiters and convenience store clerks, at best. But being admired for the kind of person you are is not in the cards. Sorry, ladies, I don't make the rules. I just explain them. In a sense, all of this means tossing out the long-standing social contract observed by most men and women and ditching most everything you've ever learned about relating to men. Happy wife, happy life has to go. It's not a mantra of respect. It's just how women control men with fear of abuse. When you think about it, it's kind of bizarre that anyone would have to explain this. But here we are with me explaining how bullying someone doesn't make them respect you. Anyway, I'm not saying you can't be happy with superficial versus actual respect. Obviously, a lot of women are. But those are generally the women who men don't respect. And there's nowhere to go with that in this talk. All this isn't to point the blame at you or to make you feel bad. The modern social contract between the sexes darkens all of us. It's a litany of double standards and rigged contingencies that leave both sexes operating at a net loss when weighed against the benefits of successful, respectful relationships. Men and women share responsibility for these problems, which I stress in just about every talk I do. It's just that this talk is about advising you what you can do about it as a woman. Anyway, next up is another essential. Bring something more than your needs and your sex to the relationship. If you're looking for Prince Charming, you are not looking for respect. 
An employed dental hygienist is a damn sight more respectable and useful, for that matter, than a princess. It's 2017. Carry your weight. Enabling a lazy toddler who only wants to play doesn't exactly make a man all warm and fuzzy with respect. And most importantly, it fosters contempt. Lots of men yield to the pressure to play the role of the selfless caretaker for women, only to become hostile toward them for the constant burden they impose. Hostility and respect, by the way, they don't live under the same roof. I need to make it a point here to drive this one in. The standard social contract between men and women, the expectation of men you were raised with that's been socialized into your worldview is more likely to make a man hate your guts than to love or respect you. What he's doing in that standard rope performance as sugar daddy and yes man is draining his life away. It's not just making him lose respect for you, it's killing his self-respect. He probably won't blame himself. After all, he's just doing what his training and socialization inform him is the right thing to do. The only one left to blame is you, and he will. Some men will pick up a bottle to handle the cognitive dissonance. Others will pick up another woman. Still others will quietly, slowly seethe, eventually showing contempt for the very ground you walk on. There are probably some unicorns out there, a small handful of men so utterly and completely disconnected from their own needs that they're almost happy to live like your vassal. But again, those men can't fulfill your need for respect. If you wanted one of those, you probably would have quit listening 30 seconds into this talk. Because as the recipient of his being so sacrificial, it is also a given that women won't respect him. I don't respect men like that, and in the end, nobody does. These are men who don't even respect themselves, which calls into question any respect they claim to have for others. It's hard to respect a man who works like a slave to enable the laziness and self-indulgence of a human parasite, even when you're the parasite. Hell, especially when you're the parasite. It breeds what we call hostile dependency, and it isn't pretty. And that brings me to more traditional relationships for the men and women who choose them. If what you bring is being a housewife or being a wife and mother, I've got no problem with you or your man. Just bring your A game and make taking care of him your job. Work like you want a promotion, like the well-being of your family depends on it just like he does. I won't say anything else about traditional relationships except to say that there's a growing number of very sane men who see the traditional model as very crazy, making men too vulnerable to all manner of abuses. I'd consider that before taking any man or his respect for granted. Next, ask for the truth and listen to it with grace and maturity. Women frequently criticize men for being less than honest, then make men suffer when they tell the truth. Ladies, that is the reason men lie to you. Because so many times the truths you don't want to hear hang like the sword of Damocles above his head. He knows that if you spot him quickly checking out some other woman's ass, he is better off lying to you than to own what he did despite the fact that there is nothing wrong with him noticing another woman's ass. Lots of very faithful men do it all the time. It's just human. Your ass is not supposed to own your man's eyes. Cut the entitlement and move on with your life and your relationship. If you can't handle that or a thousand other similar circumstances, you can't even handle a human being. How's anyone supposed to respect someone that emotionally fragile? Now, here's one we shouldn't ignore. For the love of everything holy, own your shit. With the men I've spoken with over the last 30 years, one of the frustrations that has surfaced over and over 
was that their women seemed constitutionally incapable of accepting responsibility for their own actions. That inability or unwillingness to demonstrate love through personal accountability kills a lot more than respect, namely pretty much everything. But when dealing with an adult who is without adult agency, respect is dead at the scene. So if the prospect of eating crow in a relationship at comparable levels to your partner is incompatible with your worldview, then you can count yourself in with a whole lot of women and count yourself out of ever being respected in a relationship. If you can't own your shit, you don't deserve to be respected. Finally, the last thing I'm going to suggest is that you familiarize yourself with red pill thinking. Men are talking openly these days about what they don't respect in women, and increasingly in terms of what they won't put up with from women. There's no secret about any of it. There's now dozens of YouTube channels, this one being the very finest, of course, where you can learn in no uncertain terms what men respect and what they don't. And I'm sorry to say that choosing this way to learn is a little like getting beat up. All the lessons are hard, some of them brutal. Men understand this. Fifty years of unending, harsh critique of men in the media and across the entire culture provides most men with sufficient experience to empathize with what you're going through. They get harsh critique here, too, the saving difference being that the critique here is a lot more accurate. Most of them will tell you, too, that unlike the blue pill criticisms of the last half century, it has done them some good. The truth will set you free, as they say, after it stomps a mud hole in your ass. So with that, I suggest you take that stomping alongside the men whose respect you claim to want. It's clear in my mind that for modern relationships to have any chance at all with the changing attitudes of men who are starting to wake up, this is the necessary way to go. And that concludes my talk for the day. As always, I hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.